Hi, my name is Kevin Matthews, and I'm the owner of Advanced Orthopedic Designs, and I would like to introduce you to our new line of AFOs called Load Shifters. What, what these AFOs do is they effectively remove up to 100% of the weight carried through the heel and the ankle uh, by transferring the load to soft tissue of the lower leg. How they work is we use hydrostatic compression of soft tissue by circumferentially controlling the soft tissue of the leg and then strapping it on very tight. What the patient does when they put it on is they elevate their foot in the AFO as much as they figure out over time how much they need to to get the amount of unloading that they need. Because the calf is conical shaped, when they elevate their foot and then strap it down, when they step down, the foot is going to try to drop through the, the orthosis, but eventually it will get choked off and so it will stop at a certain point. So the patient will elevate their foot as much as they need to to get the amount of unloading, perhaps 20 or 30 percent, whatever it takes to remove the pressure or get rid of the pain. Uh, basically, we use a foam liner, it's a quarter inch thick and comfortable, wrap it in, then we use a plastic shell to introduce friction to limit the, uh, the foam from sliding out, and also the plastic will keep the softer foam from wrinkling to maintain the integrity of the orthosis. Now this is the design that is going to be most effective. It's a double upright design with dual channels so that we can adjust the angles in dorsiflexion or in plantar flexion to fine-tune gait. Uh, and, and by having being able to adjust this, we can establish a better gait pattern uh, individually for the patient. Now, this is somewhat heavy. So if a patient is unable to tolerate or carry this amount of weight, we have an ultralight version that's all carbon fiber, weighs less than half of this. But the drawback to this is that it's not adjustable for angulation, so we're going to have to get it right. We're pretty good at that. But also, it's not adjustable, so this opening here has to be as wide as the forefoot so that the patient can get their foot through here to don the brace. So there's necessarily a lot of gapping at the malay line. It's not a concern as to function because, again, they're going to be carrying the weight up here and then this will just be inside the shoe. It's just cosmetically not appealing. It looks like it's poorly made because of the gap there, but that's the only way that we can accomplish this. So this is the ultralight version of the load shifter. Now, there may come times where you have a patient with an ulceration or a Charcot deformity, like this foot here, right here in the midfoot, we've got a lateral collapse with a fracture, and there is no ulceration, but there's a chance of ulceration due to the fracture. So we need to unweight this foot. But if you look at this foot, it's short, the toes are end right here. This isn't my cast, it's one we're making for someone else. But um, because this foot is so short and wide, if we tried to make either one of these, chances are it would not go into a shoe. So what this patient is going to be needing is the neuropathic load shifter, which is similar in manufacturer to the ultralight, but it's fully enclosed because it's not going to be put in a shoe because the foot that gets one of these is a foot that is not going to go into a shoe. So basically, all the same premises, the friction, and we offer them with both ski buckles and Velcro closures. Ski buckles give better leverage and uh, offer a little bit better control. And this is the, the design that we're leaning to in the future. The Velcro does work, as I will show you. I'm going to put this one on to show you how it works. But So this is the neuropathic load shifter, and it comes with an optional shell to cover the posterior aspect so that if they're ever out in the rain they won't get wet 
It isn't absolutely necessary. The foot is elevated quite a bit. It has a removable custom insert on the inside and we modify that so that we don't need to have a lot of heavy crepe on the outside and we have the rocker bottom effect but it's incorporated in the foam insert as opposed to all the heavy crepe on the outside. This weighs about two and a half pounds. This weighs less than two pounds and this weighs between four and five pounds. So this is the heavier duty version but this is heavy duty and this is for the active person that needs unloading for whatever reason, okay? It, we use as a carbon, it's, it's carbon, carbon uh, lamination, so there's like an energy storing toe plate for, to aid in ambulation. So when we put this on, basically I recommend you fit the patient with a prosthetic sock, three or five ply, uh, the knit right stretch sock is good. Medium fits just about everybody. Cut the distal end off and you have something to uh, aid in cushioning the calf and also ensuring that you get a tight fit. Okay, so when you put it on, the patient elevates the heel, they wrap the foam around their leg, they put the plastic back there, and then they do their Velcro straps. And they do these necessarily tight. The top one doesn't have to be super tight. The bottom you want pretty tight. But snug is good. This is very tolerable pressure. It's over a very large area. Now, I don't know if you can see this very well. But my foot is completely suspended out of the back of the AFO and I'm jumping up and down and it is not touching. It's hard to tell, but I don't know if you can see there, it is not touching. And it is very, very comfortable because it covers a large area, it's very tolerable, okay? Now this is actually my shoe, it's a little tight. I took the insole out to make room. Uh, so the patient typically will have to go to a little bit bigger shoe. Okay. Well, I just paused that so you didn't have to watch me struggle. Again, the patient will need a, a little bit larger shoe. I'll show you here. I'm stepping down and my heel is just right here. And it's not touching the bottom at all. Now, what I do is I need to elevate the other foot. I got a half inch lift in the heel of this foot and this ankle is fixed and I got it fixed with the knee in slight flexion because that really helps facilitate gait. If it's anterior, as soon as the heel hits the ground, it basically propels you into the next step. So that's real important in alignment that you get a good alignment that just kind of pitches you forward uh, as you walk. Now, with the ankle locked and the heel unweighted, you can still have a beautiful gait pattern. Okay, we're gonna go out in the hallway here so you can watch me walk. Okay, so I have my heel elevated probably a little bit more than, uh, than what I need. It's probably about a quarter inch out of the bottom. So I'm gonna look a little bit long on this side. So, but you can, you can have a, just a very nice gait pattern. Now believe me, even though I'm an able-bodied person, I could not overpower this carbon fiber brace and make myself walk better. This brace is incredibly strong, so it's up to me to just put my legs in front of me, and it's important to always have equal stride length, equal cadence. Whenever we fit one of these, you wanna make sure that you eliminate any limp in your patient's gait. You may need to put three quarters inch in the other shoe on the heel, that's fine or put it on the outside of the shoe. You can get away with three quarter inch in the heel. I know that a lot of you have heard otherwise, but I've done it and I know other orthodists that have done even more than that. So if you would, you're just gonna watch me walk down the hallway here and you can see that I can have a very uh, good gait pattern uh, with very little deviation in gait and this Carbon toe plate really helps to propel through in gait. You can probably tell that my left leg is a little bit longer than my right, 
and I can compensate by some of that by letting my heel drop down a little further in the in the brace or by adding a little bit more elevation under my right shoe. And again, you will necessarily need to get a little bit bigger shoe. This shoe is a little too tight on me right now, and I can feel my toes getting squished a little bit, but it offers fantastic unloading. My heel has not touched bottom one time throughout gait. Now let me take this shoe off, and you can see my heel just popped right out uh, when I grip the shoe, and it is still fully suspended. Okay, now, people have concerns about this compression perhaps uh, interfering with circulation. I really feel that it'll actually improve circulation because you'll see when I pick my foot up, it's higher out of the brace. When I step down, it pistons down until it gets choked off. So whenever there's not weight on it, there is no stress on it. When I step down on it, then I can feel the tightness. It's not uncomfortable. I can feel the tightness. But if the tightness bothers me, I just shift weight over the other foot and flex this knee. All the pressure has gone away. Now, that up and down pistoning, I believe, will also aid circulation. Because as you drop down, it pushes the blood up. And then when you relax, it basically lets the blood flow. And then each step is almost like a pumping motion of helping circulation. Um, I don't have enough of these out there to be able to tell you definitively that there aren't circulation issues. This is a new design. There's not another one like it on the planet that I'm aware of. So there's, we're going to be learning as we go along. But it is, a, it is the best design I've ever seen for unweighting the foot and the ankle in a custom device that the patient can don easily. All they gotta really mess with is two straps. They'll have to wear a little bit bigger shoe. But if you've got to unweight the heel, there's not a better way to go. Then if, let's say the brace, the heel starts getting weight on it, all the patient has to do is push it down, that'll re-elevate the heel, and then step down on it, and they're suspended again. Now they may have to elevate it and adjust the strap, but chances are they're just gonna have to push down and then they're actually re-unloaded again. Um, so anyway, this is our load shifter line. They're available through Advanced Orthopedic Designs in, here in San Antonio for central fabrication. We have uh, instructions for casting and uh, measurement sheets. We don't require many measurements at all. I believe the cast is sufficient. I'll just ask for a couple and uh, we're willing to make these for you and we do great work and uh, look forward to doing business with you. Take care.